mystery is made. We're cranking up the lights now. Okay, so we're here at the uh, GLS research area. My beautiful fiance, Tara. And um, we haven't been in here in quite a while. It's It's been a while since I've come and tried to even see any sign of the family unit or anything. And um, so we, we chose to come down this weekend and we're going to take a poke around. This is similar time of year to when I actually spooked the really big male awake, one with 23 inch feet and 10 and a half, 11 inches wide fists. And um, so this is the same air, general area. We're about a quarter of a mile from where I woke him up. And we're on the outside just coming in on one of their one of their zones of travel that I'm aware of to check it for prints. And what we've got is this low behind us back here. And they use this draw as kind of a covered way to get out where they can see the surrounding environment before they travel outside the river bottoms. And uh, and so what we'll be doing today is, is just kind of coming in on the same route and see what they've been marking and see if they've left anything on the scent markers and things. So the first thing we're going to note uh, coming in today is right on the first scent post that we come in, we call them flags posts or whatever, but they're just breaks that they rub in their, their material into. And we went to check one that's already, that I've already known about. And it's really interesting because it appears that, um, that George has taken over a lot of the, the rubbing that's going on. So I'm, you can see in this one here, we have a top broken off and, and it's not naturally, it's not to be found anywhere laying here. And you'll also take notice that the surrounding foliage is really totally unharmed. There's not even a small break on any of the surrounding foliage whatsoever, none. So it's not like cattle have got in here and messed with this. It's, it's good four to five feet from the brush mark to the edge of the foliage. And, but what we do have above very subtly that Tara took note of is this small break. And this little break is, is pretty fresh. It's maybe a few weeks old, something like that. And, but it's, it's about six feet high above our, directly above our, our rubbing post. And so when we look at the rubbing post, take a little closer look there. And you'll note that it's just loaded, absolutely loaded with hair. I hope it's, it's taking the time to focus in on the post and not the background. I really can't tell. So, um, but the whole thing is loaded with hair. And what we see on the top is our, our chestnut colored hair uh, wrapped up with some blonde fragment hairs in it. And underneath that, if you'll really notice, maybe down on the side, you might see it. Underneath that is some black hair. And that black hair was here before. And that's mom's. And there's some here. And that's mom's. But what I'm seeing is where, and we noticed it on my most recent trip before this one, but uh, where George seems to be taking upon himself to now uh, do the primary rubbing and scent marking. At least so he's running probably this, the perimeter out here doing that. Now they'll set these up every so often on this front. There probably won't be another one for a little while. But on these zones where they'd have uh, their zones of travel and their entry points, they'll take just a, a point like this. Out of all this, there'll be one maybe oh, every 300 feet or 400 feet or something. You, some might be a little farther in, but not much. Usually right on the edge and they'll make one of these posts. So once you can identify these and find them, um, it's pretty crazy because we did the same thing with the Michigan, we did the same thing in Colorado, so they, they, they mark these zones. They do it with little different trees, they do it in different ways, but this is what they do. And we found up to four of these in a day in a site just by kind of knowing how to predict and find them. So today we brought in the sample kit, and I'm gonna go ahead and we'll pull a little bit of George's hair today real quick and then um and then i brought casting material stuff so our main intent today is to try to come in here and get a more recent print maybe we can establish uh how george has progressed in his growth rate if we can get his he's he should foot should be around oh i would say um well it was right at 15 when we left last time so we'll see what he's done in the last couple of years um i don't think they're not going to grow that quick this later in life but uh, but it should be larger anyway, so we'll, we'll check that out. And um, also, I'd really like to find prints of the big, big male and uh, get these little 23 inch footprints of those 10 and a half inch wide uh, hand prints. So. so, I'll probably just jack these up and just grab them out. Any tweezers.
a nice nice little clump out now we can see you see how, how these are and how soft and fine and beautiful there and the, the color and that chestnut purpley I can see the purple hue um, boy they look just right everything looks just perfect Above clean here. Like that. We've got a lot to look at today, so I'm not going to lollygag on this site. So. Too much lollygag. That's probably a term a lot of you have never heard of. That's a word. A lolly no lollygagging. No lollygagging. It's an old school word. <laughs> old school. Back then they just started making words. All right, we're gone. All right. Do it quick. So this is, um, just taking note, we're just leaving the, the, the rub post, which is right there, and just taking note of the ground here. We have this large Russian olive branch. These things, this is a hardwood. This is really tough to break. To snap an end like this is insane. And you can see over here where it actually came from, it's about 15 feet away, 20. And we have uh, we have the damage here. We have damage here, and up above, we actually have a bent down damage even above that up here on the stem. But this break is really tight, really really tight. So it would have been very hard to have done that without pressure, immediate pressure right there, and it would have been horrendous. Just a fresh break. See what's been done here? Yeah. They pinned it back. So this branch, this branch has been pinned back behind this one. So that's that's nice. And then here's the the deal to it. And that's that's above cow. Something up here? Yeah, that's a yeah, that's another break off. So this was there was big motion right here. This whole hole here. Look at this. There's a snapped end, snapped end, snapped end. So this whole thing was had been right. Something big passed through here. Now look around here. Turn around. Can you see it over there? Oh yeah! Wow. That's huge. That's big. And so that was thrown in there, broke off and thrown in there. So they've right been. It's a big animal coming in, coming through a tight space. Can you see that? Oh, see the camera. 
Or should I go over there and get it? No, you can. Yeah. Sure you can. Right. So this is just like a little kick it cell, man. Mm -hmm. I want to get out. There's an opening over there. I kind of want to check for food remnant is what I'm doing. I know they eat stuff. I don't know where to go. And you think this is tight for us, but they'll move through here at speed, even a big one. And they do this when they do it, though. Snap here, there's one there. A cow don't usually use these. They'll go through every once in a while, but cows don't usually use these things. They're just ink. They could be in here laying down right now, so. But we may hear, if they catch us in here early, we may get to hear a, a warning whoop or bark. It'll usually just be one. So we're looking at some damage in a few spots here that over the years we've seen them do these breaks and they'll do them every year repeated. And um, so we walked right by one too. But, so these here are kind of what we're talking about. You know, it's the real common twist over and snaps. Snap down, snap down. They do this only when the material's red. And you got some breaks here. This is way above cow height, naturally. Um, but generally when, when there's still a, uh, a fresh sapling, this you have this red, because then they're easier to, to identify. But you have a large break here that's back behind cow travel. And then you've got breaks like up here. This isn't snow load or anything like that. And then... Um, we can get over here, and this is one we'll go ahead and take a close look at because you can see all the way up there. It's well, it's above my arm. It's over seven, so and see they're all around these entry points. What we're looking for now is, is uh, basically where they've been, you know. So if they've been in here and feeding through the winter on the Russian olive on the ground and stuff, then likelihood is they're, they're going to mark this stuff as they do it. And so we can figure out kind of is this transient behavior and they're just moving up and down, maybe doing uh, hunting or whatever they're doing, or are they in here occupying this, this, this uh, habitat at this time? And so this is how we do it is we track them down by this and look at their markers, how they identify where they're at, where they're headed, and where they're going. So... Yeah, this is interesting stuff. And you see a lot of this small, and this is twisted and stripped down. These are the subtle, subtle, subtle breaks. Yeah, yeah there's an old, there's three, four. Yeah, same thing, though. And they'll do the same thing over and over, and no cows up here at over six foot, um, twisting things, breaking them straight down. So it's not a horse, not a cow, it's not snow load. Um, let's see what else we got. Okay, 
It looks like we just walked up on one. It's moving farther back there now. So, I guess that's what it was. It could have been, it didn't sound like a deer, because I heard thuds. So I was just, we were just pointing out this break, and she said this one, and that one, and that one, and that one. When she said that one, something spooked about maybe about maybe 50, 60 feet. And it went that direction a little bit, and then it went that direction. And then I heard something large just now after I turned the cam on. Hopefully you got that maybe over there. That's beautiful. That was, that's big. Whatever that is, is big. And then it went dead silent. That's not a cow. I didn't hear any hoofs. Nothing. Whatever went through there, went through there heavy and big and soft and fast. Wonder who's in there. Let's go see. Fresh breaks right here. It's definitely farther than this. See these little clear zones in here back behind the brush. movement way over there. Circling back on us. Right there now. I can hear feet, feet, feet steps. This is cool. I think he was laying like, would have been laying right in there. Right through there. I don't think he could be more than 50 feet away, maybe. going to happen is, you'll see all this tangled nasty messes here, and stuff laying across. I can't get through any of that without making a ton of noise. See how this is all down? This is all covered in leaf matter, scatter. I can't make it anywhere into that zone without making an absolute ton of racket. So right now, I don't know exactly where I'm at. I don't know I'm coming this far. Unless he's watching right now. 
I'm moving so he could sit back there and I would never see him if he's still and he could see me easy if I move so but this is where I was telling Tara we wanted to go because they go in here and eat it's like a like a romper room like a little playground in here you can see uh, all the shit laying here they, they've done a lot of damage through here it's like a play zone though and see these trails no cows go through this you can see brakes if you can see that one back there i'm not sure i want to see where he went through and then maybe i can get hair it's got hydrated follicles on it have to bust myself here. And people will be all, oh, you're full of shit, whatever, you're just making it up. Okay. I'm not making it up, trust me. Crawling on my hands and knees now. This is right where I filmed all of and all this before. Though. So, but I had horrible cameras in those days. And I know they're totally down now because they're on to us. So, well, it took them a long time to figure out we were here. I tell them, Tara, they're all going to be bedded down because they sleep this time of day. Let me go back to her. So they know where we're at. I know where they're at. At least that one. It's either one that doubled back or it was... So you can see the size of brakes in here. It's pretty consistent. But they were liable to have come through this zone, so... Gotta look for hair. one or two it was either it was either one went in there took, went to the left and then went started going that way and that way or the one went that way one was already over there and moved that way so you'll notice this break right here Rest all on the ground there. The high break there, about seven, but that's real old. That one there is not old. So, this is another corridor. This actually, I've been here with them before, so this is one of the hot spots. It's another broken one there hanging still. We start getting in here a little deeper. Let's see a broken one hanging there.
we went down, we went ahead and came down river a couple of hundred feet to ease off of them a little bit and let them move and go wherever they're going to go. Oh yeah, there's a lot of recent shit in here, honey. A lot. Weird. So usually these are kept pretty clean. There's a lot of breakage here. This None of this stuff was broke right here. It didn't fall here. It's not broke out of these trees. It's all tossed in here for some reason. I don't know if they're trying to keep the cows out of it until they come back. Or I'm noticing a lot of stuff's thrown down in here. Look. All over the place. That's not very normal for them. Yeah, I want to get a hair sample over seven feet, around seven foot of the head. So hopefully we don't run into any of them over here. I don't know if we can get through right here or not. Somewhere's pretty weird. Man, they have stuff dumped all over me. I'm not kidding, all these branches. That's why it's so hard to get through here. See this? I don't go here. This is all shit that's thrown in here. It block, blocked all these paths in. They're gonna get pissed off with an unblocker. None of that shit's just. Woods don't just fall apart in here. We can go through most of this out here and there's nothing like that. So. This is rugged. Well, now you know how tough Terry is when I make her follow me through. Oh, jeez. Okay, so this is another comfort zone in here. This is just off their playground, which is all that under those big trees right over there. That's where they just were. So. That's where we're actually going. There's another signpost out here. Somewhere. So yeah, they were just at the base of those big trees right there. Just behind those. When we flushed them. So I'm going to check this other rugged post. Let's see if they've rubbed on it. No, they're not using this anymore. There's still a little bit of hair there. There was a lot of hair there. Matter of fact, it was there for five years, and now it's all been collected. It's not there. I wonder if somebody collected it. It's possible. But yeah, so there's these. and So they were just past us, just beyond this point. 
we were on them. So we get into the base of these big trees, and often there's food remnants as they hang out. So the tracking them in here is super tough. So this is a recent movement. Something broke the leaves out here and flipped. See this leaf? Dirt on the bottom there, sitting like this. That leaf came from there. Those are toes, probably. If I move this out of the way, see there's a little round imprint right there. And then there's another one right there. So this is about all we're gonna get through this kind of material. You're not gonna get a footprint unless it's shine. And I see a lot of actual shine where it's been flat stepped by something through here. But that's not ever going to be definitive. So, and hopefully we get to cast the track today. We're going to look in here real quick. See if we can find anything from where they just, they're here. So, from them just now being here. And then we'll, um, we'll go down and try to get on the river somewhere where we can get some sand or mud. And uh, attempt to get a track. Yeah, so this is like little uh, romper room. We find sign of them hanging out in here. And it looks like a lot of the trees are war from, from something going up and down the trees over and over and over. So. I know it sounds arrogant to be saying, oh, we know this, we know that, but it's 2011. Probably put 300 trips here in with them, and I've been in a few feet and seen them and everything else, so. Somebody too big got on that branch. And that one snapped over right there. A lot of them are busted off like that. It's pretty funny. But yeah, this is generally, and I'm not seeing any recent travel. So I might have just had one transient subject in there. It might be George or Amos. One that's not scared to run around alone in here. You can see how thick it is, and all they got to do is lay down in a low spot, and they're gone. You'll never find them unless you step on them. Which is why every once in a while we flush them, because we walk right up on them. Even if they know we're coming, they won't move until we get a certain distance. Then they'll break and take off, like what just happened earlier. Now you're going to get them jealous. They will start throwing shit out. Yeah, I tried to. I tried to. See, they're pretty... They don't be rubbing on everything. You notice that? Yeah. Only a couple places they'll do those rubs. That other one was good. Man. These cedars are really durable. And they mess with them and trash on them all the time, so... They twist them up. All right, I'll turn this off. If we find any direct sign, and put it back on. So Tara and I were coming out and uh, up another river here looking for prints, and there's a spot here where, where I used to put game cam because they got a playground in there. And they have to cross right here when they get to this butte. They either got to go right, expose themselves up top or cross this. And we didn't find any tracks coming out. We've only had sign of maybe like one subject out there here. We haven't had sign of the family yet. And then so we're checking this other bank and we're looking up at this slot access where one could certainly go up and down, no problem. And, um, and at the base over here, checking for tracks, there are, there are a series of small tracks across here. And then, but there's one in particular that does not make sense. And it looks like it has a toe form at the front, a couple of them and possibly a mid-tarsal ridge, but the, the toe shape just does not make sense whatsoever to what we're seeing. And it looks like it's got a front edge of toes and a heel portion. And the, the, the aging, there's water in the heel portion there, there's not in the rest of these. 
the size and aging just doesn't seem to match. It looks like he stepped right on top of one of this. And you can see the first metal tarsal. Um, here, let me get where I can see it on the camera here. You can see the first metal tarsal area and then the large heel area. And then, uh, and then actually, it actually looks pretty good. So I'm gonna get a tape on this and we'll get a, we'll get a measure here. So this would be right at, let's see here, come here, yeah. Right at 14 inches, so that'd be Amos could be 14 inches by now. It's too big to be George, but Amos should be right up about that size. But yeah, that's a really good possibility. Doesn't look quite like what I'd expect, but I just I wouldn't count that one off. So. Okay, so we're on our we're on our egress now. We'll be in our way kind of out of the riverbed and uh and concluding that we're going to go out through some tight spots and see if we haven't got any, any tracks out there or anything so Almost ripped the mic off. Okay. Now, this is a bad spot. You smell the cat? Huh? Smell cat? Smell him? I smell pine. You didn't smell that cat whiff? There's a big cat here somewhere. Let's go. You go back that way. This is a dirt dirt wall. I think probably that hole right in front of us, probably. Definitely smell big cat. You don't know where the hell they're going. Got to open back up eventually. Sometimes the egress is the worst part. I'm about to peel. It's hot in here. Huh. huh? I'm about to peel. It's hot in here. Yeah. Very good. I'm getting. I think that will walk on. All right. Deal. There goes that. That was nice. Huh, nice you to hold my hat for me. Yeah. What do you got? Oh wow. Yeah, I think it's a cow. I think it's a cow. Just 
Don't look at that I think that's cow, yeah. We got Ross up in here doing the same thing we're doing. All we need to get out right to there. Too thick that way? We can backtrack about 50 feet, I think, and get out. Oh, why she's carrying a camera gimbal. Yeah, hold on. Back here. Oh, wow. Big steel. Holding all this stuff back. There's a lot of this weird stuff in here. Because the government was doing a lot of secret crap. And see it's all buried in these trees. Been here since probably the 40s. What are you doing? Right oh, here, watch me come out of here. Yeah, there's always a lot of big damage on this tree. The major, major travel corridor. You see what they've done there. The damage in here will go all the way to eight feet, ten feet a lot of times. A lot of flat padding. No recent activity of the main family unit at all. A lot of sign of maybe. A uh, solitary individual, and we obviously flushed one solitary individual. So, but most of the sign looks pretty old. So it's not like they've been down here much. Obviously, he's down here right now. But here we got this tunnel over here. But anyway, so obviously we have a single subject that's been in and out. On his own, seems like, and lots of leaving lots of sign over the last couple of weeks. Family unit's not here yet, or they won't be here this year. They probably will be. One side of the riverbed looked to be cleaned of Russian olive and food remains. And the other side of the riverbed uh, was completely not cleaned at all. Uh, it's kind of amazing, actually, because it was just. Rushing all, all over the place, and usually this time of year they've cleaned all that up by spring. And this side looks really, really clean. But like I said, the other side of the river, there's no occupation. So uh, it's been a couple of years since we've been down here and really took a serious look. So you get some really, really good hair on the first uh, rub post or, or sign post. And uh, other than that, you know, we got some look like toe imprints and stuff cruising through. Um, we weren't able to find really any sign of the subjects that, or the subject that we encountered, but we really didn't go in right where he was, and we didn't go through and push him out either. So. Bones in here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's go check him for big hominid, hominid bite marks. Good call. Okay. Check it. First off, what carried it over here? Is there any canine, canine marks? A, a tibia. Or, or big cat. You know what I see already? I'll show you. Oh, that's one of the... That's a thing. Yeah. 
what do they usually do? They bite the fucking knuckles off, right? Yeah. Look at that. Mm -hmm. That's that half inch wide, same as my thumbnail. Right? There it is. There's a tooth scrape. Ain't no coyote. No, no big cat mark, no coyote mark, no bear mark, no nothing. Although you do have... No, like, gnawing look, marks? Well, there's this. Or... Look, here. Oh, yeah. yeah Which, that could marks. be from any teeth, even, even a big mouth just happening in your mouth. But what I do see is that. And that's obviously scooped right out. This has been messed up, been through. Well, there's no gnaw marks on the edge of the bone, though. You know where they'd be gnawing the cartilage? There's none of that. So you know what this looks like? It looks like this whole thing was in a big mouth. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like the whole end was in a big mouth, and they mouthed off. Because, look, there's not a single gnaw or canine scrape on any of the end. And look, at you can really see that big. I hope I've even had the camera on it. You can really see that big divot there where that incisor went through and it's at least it's kind of got a little double oh that's just something hanging off there yeah so that incisor is as wide as my thumb uh, it's still got meat on it yep yeah go check the other bone people say why don't we grab those and when they have a real definitive one I will next time I've left a lot of them laying I shouldn't uh, but that one's not as definitive as I'd like. Here's the pelvic section. Let's see what we got here. Don't see any canine gnawing. It's not that old. It was definitely this winter. We look here. We see this big, big pattern again. There's no edging like a slide of a canine. Then you got this big scallop and a big scallop, like really big. And again, all the ribs are just snapped off. They're broke off. They're not chewed off. They're snapped. And that, again, is consistent with the big hominin feeding. Not really. Yeah, look, they're just broken. Something literally manually broke these off. Same. Upper pelvic. This is usually chewed off first to get chewed off by everything, canines, everything else. They eat this upper structure. But again, we don't see it's snapped off. It's been broken off. This isn't chewed off. Look at that. We could break the upper that flange off that pelvis, just snap that off of there. That's horrendous. Yeah, that kind of damage is horrendous. It really is creepy. Like this break just goes right through the rib and everything. Like they just broke that whole section out. Well, let's go check that other bone. Yeah, let's check the other bone for teeth. Good teeth imprint would be just about as good as a good track, man. I mean, even though I've left so many behind, I just I'd like to get some back in the collection. Straight over here. Oh, got it. What bone is this? Oh boy, somebody got tomorrow. Oh yeah. Look at that. And, and what, kind, what what bone would this be? Huh? Looks like um, part of a humerus. Okay. It's got that swirl. I hope I'm right on that. Somebody damn sure broke her open and extracted tomorrow. There are some... Well, Mark, man, those almost look like a cut mark, not a scrape. Crazy. Those are definitely scrapes, but that's those are a little too big to be a coyote. Again, it looks like something mouthed this whole. Mm -hmm. Might have bit the damn thing on through, but they mouthed the whole thing was in the mouth. Here, hold it this way so I can get it. There you go. Some shadow, some shadow on, on the closer, marks. Closer. Get some shade on the marks. Maybe we should keep that one. It's just not that it's not got that definitive. There's no incisor. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I guess, yeah. it's just not what it's not definitive. As a whole, I'd say it's good, but 
And then where's the rest of the carcass at? So far we've got one. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Boy, something toted some big pieces around, man. Look a little bigger than coyote pickup and all around pieces. Damn, the whole cage is just thrown over here. Let's watch the ground real good right here. There's a real possible right here. These aren't cow marks. <clears throat> Oops, my cord here, excuse me. Man, it's just chucked over here. Yeah. It's been like thrown over here. No, no, like coyote dropped it or did anything like that. It's like, like literally chucked over in this part of the. And again, look at all the breaks. Everything's just broke off, just broken, broken. Wow. There's the skull. Yeah, I mean, we're still missing a lot of cow. But yeah, that thing being all thrown, it does look like it was thrown. It doesn't, it's not dropped straight down. Wow. Now, like I said, we're still missing a lot of cow. I would assume that the hindquarters is where the rib cage was separated from over there. So I would think that it came down through that gap behind this tree. Yeah, and I think we're right. Yeah, this way. So, because it should have gone down in the. Yeah, the rib section or the pelvic section, all that should have been together. That would have been the bigger piece. So then, there's the spinal column. Well, we've got some slidey steps down this. The cows walked over everything and pretty well ruined that. the rest of the cow. Hmm. Okay. okay, well that's it for us. Uh, we're going to be rocking out of here. This is the GLST uh, Family Unit Research Area. Tara and I covered, I don't know, covered a couple miles in here today. Got some really, really cool evidence you'll see. And, um, or you have seen, I guess. Anyway, just want to thank everyone for coming along with us. Thank all the people that have supported us and continue to support us. And I never, ever say it in any video, but go ahead and like, subscribe, whatever. Um, it seriously bumps YouTube. You're know, getting seriously blocked all the damn time. And that's the only way to push on it. So help us out in that regard. We do hard work. We do Okay, thanks a lot.